guys, it's the new sensation, big annotation here, and today I'm coming to you with a deck that I've been really enjoying recently, super super fun to play, um, surprisingly does really well, especially into certain matchups in the meta right now, uh, and just all around really really good fun to play, um, and that is going to be the Token Toa deck from one of the more recent sets, can't really remember which set it came out from, set 17 I think, maybe set 16. Um, but yeah, like I've already said, super fun deck to play, uh, feels super troll just like spamming the board with a bunch of tokens and then actually being able to win games with it, but um, it's just an amazing deck and i got to give a couple of shout outs, the first one being to Scrub Games for forcing me to play set 2 Childs on my stream by submitting some channel points and choosing the deck that I play in the next tournament, uh, because eventually that did lead me to finding and building this deck because I wanted to look for more decks that just spam the board with tokens and uh, see if I can win any more games with that. And uh, yeah, so even if you're forced to play bad decks, it can lead to good things sometimes. And um, there's also a topping list of this deck over in America, topped some tournament, I'm not sure what, what kind of tournament it was. But um, I did take a little bit of inspiration from that deck by the time that I found that list, uh, I was mostly just looking for an Overrealm and Secret Rare of choice, so those were the main two cards that I took from that list. Um, other than that, I'd already kind of got the rest of the deck together by that point, but I will have a link to that video down in the description below as well for anyone who wants to check out a list of uh, this leader who actually topped as well. So um, without further ado, I guess I'll get into the deck. Um, the leader is... it's got a couple of effects honestly it's got when it attacks on the front side just plays a token there's no draw power on the front side so at the start of the game you're going to have a very small number of cards in hand until you awaken which is where you start to draw a lot more and uh, the awaken also doesn't draw any cards so when you have three or less life or if you have your three cost specified black unison in play then you get to untap two energy and play another token. So lots of token spam, which is very helpful for some of your effects, but it does mean that f until about turn three you won't be drawing any cards, really. Um, but like I said, uh, the Awaken is really, really strong. Um, being able to untap two energy and just progress with more aggressive plays is very strong, especially for a black deck. Being able to untap extra energy on turn three is amazing. And especially considering you'll be playing your unison on turn three as well to allow you to awaken most of the time. And so that means you'll be pay playing your unison, which is your main value generator throughout the game. Uh, and then you'll be able to untap two and still make aggressive plays on the turn where you're playing your unison, which is very strong. Or even just leave energy open for some negates. But most of the time you're just using that energy to aggress further. And then on the back side, uh, you get to actually draw when you attack, so when she attacks you draw a card and play a token, uh, which is very strong. Um, so in a way I guess you're plussing two there because you can combo the token off for a 5k combo power, but you can also use it for some of your effects, so it's actually really really helpful uh, being on the back side and getting that plus two every single turn. And to clarify, all of the tokens that are being played in this deck are the Demon Realm Race tokens, so that means they are zero cost combo power, or zero combo cost, uh, 5k combo power and 5k base power. Um, so you're not really going to be swinging with them because they're only 5k's unless you want to combo up a lot of cards. Uh, but they can be comboed with which is very helpful and uh, you're basically just using them for your extra effects. Um, she also has two activate mains on the backside, or an activate main and an activate battle, sorry. Uh, the first activate, or the activate main being you discard a card from your hand and then you can play two tokens in rest mode which is very helpful, just any time you need tokens, you can just spawn them in off your activate main. Uh, on the back side, you're just gonna have the potential to generate three tokens per turn just off your leader, so you'll have access to all of your effects that require tokens. Um, and it also fuels up your drop area for Overrealm because we're playing a black deck. We're gonna have access to consistent Overrealms and dark Overrealms. And this deck honestly doesn't really fill up the drop area like a lot of other black decks do. Um, so just being able to discard cards from your hand to gain an effect and then fill up the drop for Overrealm is actually surprisingly helpful because a lot of other black leaders are bursting in some way or like filling up the drop area or warp in other ways and then refueling the drop from the warp in like uh, similar to like Dark Broly, you know, Vegex, Marseille and any of these leaders, 
a lot of the black leaders nowadays are filling up the drop for overrealms, whereas this leader doesn't really do that in any way. And then the activate battle is once per turn as well, you spirit boost one and you play a black energy. So it is a very expensive activate battle, you're spirit boosting and paying an energy. Um, and basically for the specific unison that you're playing in this deck, on activate battle you're able to give it plus 10k power and double strike, which means if you're swinging with your unison, anytime you want to you're just able to effectively give it a champer without losing a card in your hand which is very very helpful and this is a big way in which you can finish games just being able to push through with that unison but it also just means your unison is always going to be a threat and so um, your opponent is often incentivized to negate your unison swings uh, which will cost them resources in hand so going into the deck the main card of the deck, 100% the best card, I believe, is going to be the Demon God Poutine Unwill Might. Uh, this card really just wins games on its own sometimes, it super, super overperforms, and it makes me very happy that I now own four copies of the deck, because I know for some of you who might have been watching me play this deck on some of the webcam locals, uh, from the very start I was playing this deck originally with when I was only uh, owning one copy of this card. So, and considering this card in my opinion is the best card in the deck, uh, only owning one copy really did not cut it for me, but slowly but surely I've been picking up other copies and now I own four copies of this card and uh, my god does it feel much better to play with. Uh, but this card, Blocker, you can Dark Overrealm it in for one energy, it's Dark Overrealm three, so you only need three cards in the drop, which it, even for this deck is fairly easy to set up. Um, when it's played from the hand, you can play a token. That's very important to note because we have a card coming up which plays this card from the deck. So if you play this card from the deck, you won't get to spawn in a free token. But if you Dark Overrealm it in or you swap it in with the one drop poutine, which we are also running, uh, you do get to play a token, which is very nice uh, because this deck loves tokens. Um, and then it's got an activate battle. Once per turn, you can kill one of your tokens to draw a card, this card gains 10k power for the battle and switches to active mode. That's relevant for a couple of reasons, so obviously if you're swinging with it you can make it effectively a dual attack that draws a card, uh, and on the first swing it'll be 15k, uh, 25k, the second swing it will be 15k. But because it's activate battle, um, you can trigger this during either player's turn, so if your opponent is swinging into this card or swinging into anything else uh, that isn't your unison, then you're able to trigger this activate battle just to pop one of your tokens, draw a card, and then restand this poutine. Uh, if they're swinging into this poutine, then they're going to have to combo up to 25k if they want to have any chance of killing it, because uh, otherwise it will just save itself, switch itself to active mode, and then they can't attack it again. Um, and if they start attacking other things, then you have another blocker to block with. Um, and this deck is surprisingly defensive with the number of blockers that it can generate because this can act as a double blocker if you leave it active uh, during your turn. Um, but this is really how you generate a lot of your value in the deck. This is how you can get to ridiculous hand size, honestly. Um, just by triggering this activate battle every single turn, once during your turn, once during your opponent's turn, drawing you two cards a turn, being able to block stuff so you don't have to combo out of any attacks, being able to swing 25k and put pressure on your opponent so that they lose cards from hand. Um, really, really strong card. And then it has application against yellow, because if they're dropping repost on you, this can be two cards that you rest uh, for repost, because you can rest it for one of your swings, uh, then use the activate battle skill to restand it, and then rest it again for another swing. And then uh, during their turn, if they're swinging at you, then you can activate battle, restand it, and get another blocker on board, uh, or active even. So yeah, this card, if it sticks around, it's gonna fill your hand up to ridiculous amounts. Uh, but even if it doesn't, it's able to apply a lot of pressure on the turn that it's played, and it just overall a, an amazing card for the deck. Uh, we are running one Poutine the Dark Sorcerer. Like I mentioned before, we have ways to bring Poutine out of the deck, and that's going to be the next card we cover. Uh, there's no reason for me to cover this card, I'm sure everyone knows what this card does now, but this card is just a great card to uh, be able to play for any deck, really. And so, because we can play this uh, card out from the deck, we only really need the one copy. It's not like a it's not a necessity that this card is in the deck to be played, so if it's in life and you go to play it from deck, you can just play the other poutine and it's fine really. Um, but sometimes this card is just going to overperform for you, it will stick on the board and rest down your opponent's stuff, which is amazing of course. 
Um, and then we are running the four Demigra Demonic Overlord. So this is how you play the Poutines from the deck. It has an activate main, burst two for two energy. Uh, if your leader card is Toa or Demigra and you place this card from your hand into the drop area, you can take one or two life. So it's not up to one or up to two. You either take one life or two life. So you have to take at least one life with this card. Um, which is very important to know because this card, or well, this deck does kind of want to stay at high life if possible because you can alternatively awaken with your unison so you don't need to go down to three life really. Um, and it does have a nice amount of defense this deck with all the blockers but it doesn't really have that many high, hard negates. Um, but this card does give you autonomy over your own life. You can take yourself down to five life to give you um, access to your token negates. Um, or you can take yourself down to 3 life if you can't find your unison or you want to awaken earlier, uh, which can come up in some situations, but most of the time you just want to go down to 5 life, um, and or just try and stay at as high life as you can really against some, some like aggro decks. Um, but what this card actually does is after you take the life, burst 2 and pay the 2 energy, uh, you can play up to 1 gravy and up to 1 poutine card from your deck or warp. Uh, and then just play them onto the board. So this is how you're playing your Poutine the Dark Sorcerer. Um, and you can also choose to play your other Poutine the Umbral Knight if uh, it comes to it. Um, and this is how you can start to flood the board with the uh, Demon God Poutine Umbral Knight. Because you can Overrealm 1 in, uh, or Dark Overrealm 1 in, it will stick around of course because of Dark Overrealm. And then you can bring them in off of Demigra. You can also bring them in off of this Poutine, which is the next card we'll cover. Um, but once you start to flood the board with these, you get like two down onto the board and they stick, then you're just going to win the game. Like there's nothing really that stops you if you can get two down for multiple turns of this card um, because it generates such ridiculous amounts of value. And against certain colors, especially yellow, they have a really tough time removing the card, um, especially if you're playing around a card like Turles all too easy and not keeping it in rest mode and just... Uh, triggering the activate battle every time you block with it or attack with it and then leaving it in active mode so it can't be KO'd then you'll just be generating free value and that's why I love playing this deck against yellow because not only can you rest tokens with riposte but they have a tricky time dealing with the three drop poutine and uh, you can also spawn in tokens in rest mode off your leader effect to trigger any poutines that they might have or the trunks blocker that they might have if you're against trunks cheater so yeah this deck uh, makes me very happy because uh, I I despise playing against yellow, and so this deck does tend to do very well against yellow decks. Um, but going on to the one drop routine here, in theory you can bring this card out from the Demigra, but obviously you don't really want to, you want to bring out the three drops instead. Um, but in some dire situations you could bring out the one drops, but I've never had that situation occur yet. Uh, this one drop is uh, when it's played, you search top three cards for a Black Evil's, Evil Wizard, Demon Realm Race, or Demon God card, or you can search the uh, Meki Kabura Unison for the Demigra or Debura Swap deck, um, which we're obviously not playing. But it's just nice, you can search your other poutines, you can search your Demigras, you can search your super combos off this deck because we're running a specific super combo. Um, you will whiff off of this card sometimes, I've whiffed off of this card a good amount, but um, you won't whiff off of it all that much, you know. And the main reason that you want to play this card as well is the swap effect, so you can swap into the 3 drop poutine by spirit boosting one, bottom decking a card from your hand, and then of course returning this one drop to your hand. Uh, you could also theoretically swap into this other 3 drop poutine here, um, which I've also never had come up. <laughs> but. In theory you could do it and uh, it's a pretty good play um, because you need to spirit boost on this card you're not going to be uh, using the swap effect until after turn three because that's when we're playing our unison down of course um, but if this card does stick around until turn three or if you just play it turn three or after it's very very strong to be able to swap into your poutines because then you can play multiple to multiple poutines in a turn and like i've already said if those poutines stick you're just winning the game on the spot uh, there's no doubt in my mind that you win the game if you stick multiple to poutines, no matter what the game is looking like. Um, for our next cards, we've got three Demon God Shroom, and we've also got four Demon God Salsa. So these two cards are paired um, because they both have the same activate main, where if your leader is black and you have a token in play, you can pay one to play them from your hand. Um, the Shroom is critical and has an auto spirit boost one, you may choose one of your skillless battle cards and remove it from the game, uh, so you're removing a token of course. 
then you can warp something uh, four or less ignoring barrier when this card attacks. So the fact that this ignores barrier is huge because it means it can uh, get rid of cards like Super Namekian Slug, Son Goku Absolute Annihilation, the three drop SS Trunks in Trunks Jita. Um, so again, this card just destroys yellow decks and uh, I love it. So moving on to the Salsa. Um, we're only running three of the Demon God Shroom, mostly because the auto is quite expensive. You have to Spirit Boost one and you have to remove a token, which is pretty expensive. Um, and this card, the auto is only going to be live turn three onwards, same with the Poutine. Um, so before turn three, you can play it as a 15k crit, which is very nice for your aggressive plays. Um, but his main utility comes after turn three, so we don't really need more than three of this. Um, but it does offer some very nice removal, which this deck can kind of struggle with, I think. Um, other than attacking into your opponent's cards, you're not really removing a lot of stuff. And then the 4 Demon God Salsa uh, has the same activate main that I already went over. And then this auto limit 1, when this card attacks, you may search top 5 cards of your deck for a black android card, black demon god card, or black unison card that costs 3. So you search your unison, which is very nice. It means if you don't see your unison in your opening hand or in your first couple of turns, you can drop one of these and um, search top 5. Very important to note this auto is limit 1, um, whereas this demon god shroom auto isn't limit 1, um, which can create some confusion and some inconsistencies. But luckily, I don't think this has ever come up for me that it's limit 1, but there is a card later on that has come up for me. Um, but basically, you just don't need to play more than one copy of this at a time, because you're going to be losing out on searches then. But yeah, card is very, very nice, just searches top 5. And these two can also be your turn 1 play if you're going 2nd, because you can swing with your leader if you're going second and then generate a token which will fulfill the requirements on the activate mains. So in theory you have 10 one drops um, or turn one plays. Um, the poutine is, is going to be live if you're going first or second but these guys will only be live if you're going second. Um, and a lot of the time you might not want to drop the shroom uh, turn one because you want to save it for the spirit boost order. But the salsa is a very very nice card just being able to search top five. Um, and our next card is our unison which I probably should have gone over earlier, but here we are. Um, so 3 cost Super Mirror, 20k Unison. Uh, has a auto at the start of your opponent's turn, choose up to one of your tokens, or skillless battle cards, but you're going to be choosing a token, and it gains blocker for the turn. So like I've already mentioned, you have a lot of blockers in the stack, you're able to give your tokens blocker, and you're also able to use your poutines as effectively double blockers. Um, and then this Unison has 2 plus 1s, the first one just being that you play two tokens, and because it doesn't specify in rest mode, you're playing them in active mode, which is very helpful because if you don't have any tokens about, then you can just spawn two in for either your effects or to just give it blocker for the next turn. And then the other plus one is another activate main. You remove one of your skillless battle cards from the game, draw a card, and then warp one of your opponent's battle cards. And I'll be honest with you, this is the main plus one that you're going to be using. Um, if your opponent has any sort of battle cards on the board, this is the plus one that you're using because it's just a plus two. Um, you do have to remove a token, but you're generating so many tokens in this deck, it doesn't matter. Um, most of the time you'll be in excess of tokens, especially because you're playing this card on your awaken turn because you can awaken with your unison. So, um, and on your, on your awaken turn, you're going to be generating one token from the awaken, one token from the swing of the leader and two tokens off the activate main if you want to. So you could generate up to four tokens just off of your awaken. And then that's not even mentioning the two energy that you have to play with that can generate more tokens if you play, for example, the three drop poutine. Um, so you're mostly going to be just using this effect for removal and draw power. Uh, but this unison really does just put in the work for you. And you honestly... It's very important early on to be very careful with your uh, early spirit boosts for your swaps or to give your unison double strike because if this unison dies and you can't find another copy then it can make the game a little bit trickier. Um, and this, yeah, this unison is really what carries you into the mid game where you're able to just take over with all of the value that you can generate and the aggressive power that you can put on. 
So this unison is extremely strong. I've only had one game so far where I haven't found this card on turn three, I think. And I've, I've played this deck quite a lot. So it's very consistent that you find this card on turn three, especially because your Salsa can search it as well. Um, the next card is the Gravy. So this is going to be the main Gravy that we bring off of the Demigra. And we're playing two copies of this uh, as opposed to the one copy of the Poutine because we actually do want this card to be in the deck um, every time that we use the Demigra. Because this is the gravy that we want to be playing. We do have another gravy in the deck, but it is our super combo of choice. So we don't really want to be playing that, but we could in theory. Um, but this gravy, just when it attacks, your opponent sends one battle card from their drop area. They may send a battle card from their drop area to the warp. And if they don't, then this card becomes 30k power until the end of your opponent's next turn. So, basically, you're going to be playing this card out on turn 2 off of the Demigra, because that's your optimal turn 2 play. And your opponent probably won't have battle cards in their drop area by that point. So, that means that this guy is just going to be swinging 30k on turn 2, which is very, very nice for that aggressive pressure. And it, the fact that it stays 30k through your opponent's next turn means that it's probably not going to die unless they're playing uh, a deck like Dark Broly that can swing 30k very easily or just a deck that has nice removal. Uh, but a lot of the time this card will just stick about for a couple of turns, which is very nice, especially because drop area cards are becoming very relevant in the meta right now with decks like Trunks Jita and U7, even the Cell starter deck um, with its Union Absorb targets. There's a lot of stuff that requires cards to be in drop area right now, and so this card is actually very useful just from the fact that you can warp stuff from your opponent's drop area. Um, so that's the main gravy that we want to be playing, and this is another card that is kind of one of the more uh, strong cards of the archetype and one of the best cards in the deck, I'd argue. Um, this is the Demon God Toa Furious Onslaught. Deflect Double Strike. And the way that you're playing this card is for two energy. If you have three or more energy and two or more skillless battle cards in play, you can play this card from your hand. Um, so you can just easily fulfill these requirements past turn three by discarding a card off your leader's activate main to play two tokens in rest mode. Um, and then she has an auto limit one. You choose two of your skillless battle cards and remove them from the game. When this card attacks, draw a card, switch this card to active mode and it gains 5k for the turn. So this card effectively becomes a 25k dual attack double strike that draws you a card. So, of course, that's very, very strong. It puts on a lot of pressure. And you combine this with your unison with the activate battle off your leader swing. Or off of your leader effect, sorry. And you can push in for two 25k double strike swings and a 30k double strike swing uh, past turn three. And it gets a little bit silly. Um, this card does also have deflect, so it means it's... Uh, not going to get counterplayed, which is very, very nice. Um, you're often playing this card much later into the game, not only because of the three or more energy requirement, but just because of the simple fact that it costs two energy. Um, a lot of the time you're going to be dropping your poutines uh, until around turn four, and then once you've run out of poutines to drop, you'll start dropping the Toas down instead. Uh, but if you need to just apply pressure if your opponent's on two life or something, you just start dropping Toas. But this card is a lot of the way... This is going to lead you into finishing games, really. This often won't kill your opponent, but it will kind of force out enough negates that your unison can then push through later on. Um, because this card puts on a lot of pressure. And for some of the more defensive cards in the deck, we've got Support of the Dark Empire. Now, this card is obviously a very strong card being a token negate, but it has extra synergy in this deck because uh, it's summoning a token. And so there's a couple of cool things you can do with this card, such as... Um, the main one being using it to spawn in the token and then blocking with the token that you spawn in on another attack and then you have one of these poutines in rest mode uh, whilst during the battle where you're blocking with that token when it comes to your combo step you can activate battle on the poutine to pop the token that is blocking draw a card and then restand the poutine and the token was gonna die anyway so you're just getting a free restand on your poutine and a draw one which is obviously very, very nice. Um, but this is your main way of, this is the only negate I believe I'm running in the deck. And this is gonna be your main defensive line. Um, yeah, it's just amazing, amazing card for the deck. And this is why you wanna be going down to five life with the Demigra if possible. Uh, that is if you're not against a super aggressive deck that isn't already gonna take you down to five life. 
Um, and then for some other defensive cards, I've been running four of this Supreme Kai of Time. This is mostly because, like I mentioned before, early on in the game, you're going to struggle with hand size until you get to turn three or turn four and start sticking poutines and your unison down to draw cards. And so this card just really helps you get out of that early game, it means that you don't have to take so many early crits or double strike swings or anything like that. Um, but it also, when it comes down to it, if you're going all in on an attack, this card just gives you more combo power, which has come up quite a lot of times for me, where I don't need to use this card early on against like a much slower deck. But then the combo power comes in clutch because it's a much slower deck, so it's going to have a much bigger hand. So this card is honestly just all round great card and especially good for this deck because it can struggle with hand size in the early game and it wants to put on pressure later on. And then super combo of choice, I've already mentioned it, I'm running four gravy. I was trying out a couple of uh, things, I was trying out splits with the gravy and the Vegeta, I was just trying the Vegeta as well. But I found that 4 Gravy is just the best for me. Um, it's searchable, so you want to be able to search your super combos. And because uh, not only is it searchable, but the Poutine with the top 3 search, it bottom decks the rest of the cards rather than shuffling them back in. So if you're playing the Vegeta super combos, then if you see them in the top 3, then they're going to get bottom decked. And your only real way to shuffle the deck is with the Salsa. So you're kind of going to be sticking them at the bottom of the deck for the rest of the game until you see a Salsa, which sucks a lot. Um, so just running searchable super combos and being able to grab them off either Salsa or Poutine is just the best way. And then in a pinch, you could bring them out off the Demogra. Again, that hasn't come up for me yet because I've just been bringing out the 30k beater instead. But it could, in theory, if you're going for the kill and your opponent has a lot of battle cards in drop that they're not going to mind warping, then the super combo will just be better to super combo and then draw a card off the board. Um, and then our secret rare of choice, which I did get inspired from the list which I'll have in the description about this and the Overrealm as well. I've gone for the Majin Buu, Incarnation of Demonic Evil. Um, has amazing synergy with the deck, obviously it becomes a 3 cost and 0 specified green cost on this uh, with this leader because it's a Demon Realm race leader. Um, and because you can give your leader double strike, similar mentality to the people that were running this card uh, in King Cold deck. Um, because they can give the Unison triple strike. In this deck you can give the Unison double strike, so not quite as good, but you don't have to use your minus three. You don't have, it doesn't cost you like the um, plus or minus skill on the Unison for the turn, which is nice. Um, so you can just swing with your unison. If your opponent attempts to negate, you can pay three for this guy and just force it through. Um, honestly, you don't need this card for the deck at all. You can easily get away with running Pan or Supreme Kai, or even I've been running the uh, the Sin Secret Rare, the Sin Zeno one, that rests a load of battle cards and leader cards and unison cards when it comes into play. Um, and that works absolutely fine for the deck. Uh, you really don't need this card. I just think that it's the best secret rare to run for now. Um, but you you don't need it. Like there's, you can still end games without it. It just makes ending games a little bit easier. Um, and then the overrun, which I've been talking about, is three of the uh, SS Trunks Solitary Guardian. So this is the only overrun that I'm running in the deck. We do also have the Dark Overrun Poutine. But um, this is the only overrun that I've chosen to run in the deck. I just think that it's the best one for the deck. I have messed around a little bit with Feigned Greeting Vegeta. Uh, I've messed about with the SS4 Goku as well. Um, and both of those are fine. But like I've mentioned already, you don't fill up the drop area enough to warrant running overrun 6s or overrun 7s or anything like that. Uh, and so just the simple fact that this guy is an overrun 4, he's coming in for 25k and he's drawing a card is very, very efficient, and it gives your early turns a little bit more pressure um, so that you can cruise into turn three a little bit easier and then look to sometimes even kill people on turn three just if you see enough of these overwhelms. Um, and just the simple fact that your demo gray is going to fill up three out of four of the uh, overrun four requirement, uh, or if you want a dark overrun poutine, then it's filling up all of the cards in the drop area that you need for the poutine. Um, and so all you need to do for this trunks is demo gray and then plus backside leader activate main and you've got four cards in drop area for overrun. Um, so yeah this card is just really great in the deck gives you some early pressure gives you some uh, early cycling as well and just an all-round great card uh, and then we've got this card so this is heroic strike um, this deck obviously 
struggles against Dark Power Black Marseille in quite a bit, and that's a very prominent card in the format with decks like Trunks Jita running around, Gamma as well. Um, and so people are going to play that card against you, and it kind of shuts this deck down. I've been messing with Crisis Crusher a little bit. I've, I've ran four Crisis Crusher in the main for a couple of tournaments now, and it doesn't feel very consistent, because the issue with it is if you're going first, then you have to play it turn one, um, otherwise you're going to start filling up your board anyways, uh, and you're also going to be off curve if you don't play it turn one. And the Crisis Crusher requires you to have no battle cards in your battle area for it to be a one cost. Um, so you have to play it turn one, and then your opponent just won't play the Dark Power Black Marseille, and on their turn one, they'll pop your Crisis Crusher, because it's very vulnerable, and then they'll play the Dark Power Black Marseille, and, and it'll put you in a similar spot. Um, and there's also been times where people have just held the Dark Power Black Marseille for me to play a token down, and then played it, and then... I still can't use cards like Demogra or the Shroom and Sousa because they play themselves by skills, they're 15k or less. Um, and so it still turns off a lot of my effects and I still, I then can't play any more tokens as well on top of that. Um, and so then I've had to like either wait for my Unison because the Unison is an out to the Dark Power Black Marseille and even if you don't have a token out, your Awakened skill is a keyword skill so it gets around it. Um, so you can just warp the Dark Power Black Marseille in turn 3 onwards. But for those early turns, Crisis Crusher just doesn't feel like it cuts it. And Heroic Strike actually does do the job, and I have to give a shout out to Tom Smith for um, putting me onto this. Uh, I think he heard it from someone at his locals, but this card, um, it just it just seems better than Crisis Crusher for this deck. So what it does is an activate battle, it gives your leader card 10k power for the duration of the battle and then you can choose one of your opponent's battle cards with a cost of 2 or less and KO it. So not only is this card going to be um, more flexible than Crisis Crusher, because you don't, it doesn't require you to have no battle cards in your battle area or anything like that, um, but it also can KO anything 2 or less. And on activate battle timing as well, it'll also give your leader plus 10k, so um, it's just a nice defensive card, kind of substitutes for any sort of Realm of the God card that um, cut different, the different colours of running, like the Realm of the God Beerus destroys, Champa destroys, all of that. Uh, it can kind of substitute for that style of a card. So this is the out to uh, Dark Power Black Marseille that I've chosen for. You can definitely run Crisis Crusher and get away with it, it's fine still. Um, and like I've already said, the Unison deals with the Dark Power Black Marseille as well. So it's just those early two turns that you have to worry about that's locking you out of Demogra and a couple of tokens. But um, I think Heroic Strike is the way forward in terms of Marseille and removal for this deck. And then the last card is two Super Kamehameha. This is a card I really want to get up to three in the main deck, but I just can't find another card to cut, honestly. Um, because the rest of the deck just feels so smooth. Um, but this card, I would definitely consider at least siding the third copy for now. Um, and also, I don't want to push this deck over 50, because like with all of my decks, I feel like 50 is just the correct number to run them at. Um, but this card just helps you. It's a similar logic to the Margin Boost Secret Rare. Just helps you with those floodgates. Uh, helps you able to push through come like turn 3, turn 4, where you're really putting on the pressure once you've got your unison down. Um, and yeah, it's just an all-round good black card, and it means that you can go down to 5 life with the Demogra, you can then token negate, and then your Super Kamehameha is live. And it just means that the whole deck, the whole life-taking aspect of the deck, works smoothly, works fluidly, and there's an actual reason for you to be taking life as well, rather than just, oh, you're taking life because you have to off of Demogra because it's one or two cards. Um, so it kind of rewards you for taking life in a way which is very nice as well. Um, but that is the whole deck, uh, full 50 cards like I've already said, you just want to be running this at clean 50 to get the ma maximum consistency. Um, definitely check out the, um, deck, the topping deck list as well in the description below. Um, it seems like a very interesting list, there's a couple of different choices that that person has gone for. Uh, that differ from this list which I'm very interested to try out as well. Um, but for now, this is definitely my preferred list. Um, really enjoying this deck, and it just 
honestly surprises me how well it can do. Uh, and I'm definitely going to be playing it in some more tournaments. So if you want to watch me play it in any tournaments, then definitely check out my Twitch channel, Big Annotation 245. I'll have a link to that in the description as well. Um, where I'll be playing this deck 100%. I'll be playing it a lot more because honestly, this deck is so much fun. I can't get enough of it. But as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I always appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next video.